In today's video, we're going to be discussing chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, also known as COPD. We're going to dive a little bit into the patho as well as some signs and symptoms. Without further ado, let's dive in. Now, regarding some patho around COPD, it's important to think about COPD like being a tourniquet for the lungs, right? You have these bronchioles that come down and terminate in these alveoli, right? What is occurring in COPD is we have a chronic constriction, tightening, narrowing of these airways, of these bronchioles, which as these tighten and narrow and clamp down, you're having a decreased inside lumen, right? A more narrow pipe. Click the link below or visit nursing.com slash NFN for a free NCLEX ebook covering the 77 key topics. What's going to happen as a result of this, right? This is like a tourniquet on the lungs. I hope that makes sense. We're tightening up uh, these airways. So what's going to happen as a result in chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, we're chronically retaining CO2. We're chronically having high CO2. Our CO2 in this instance is going to be abnormal. It's going to be chronically high. It's going to be greater than 45. What's happening here basically is as we have this tourniquet on our airways, we're getting O2 in, but we're having a lot of difficulty getting CO2 out. And as a result, what's going to occur is CO2 is going to build up and we're also going to have continual buildup of O2 in these alveoli as we're getting more pressure in but we're having difficulty getting that pressure out. So what ends up occurring as a result is you actually have destruction of the walls of the alveoli. Think about it as an, a hyperinflated balloon, right? More and more O2, more and more pressure increasing inside of these alveoli, pushing on the walls of the alveoli, eventually leading to the destruction of the alveolar wall. And this ends up leading to larger alveoli and fewer alveoli some clinically significant things that we may end up seeing with patients are these top two, right? Barrel, chest, clubbing of the fingers. Patients develop what looks like a more rounded thorax, right? Um, as they basically use their accessory muscles over a long period of time. Over a long period of time, they're having difficulty getting oxygen in, they're having difficulty getting CO2 out. A tourniquet is on those lungs. And as a result, they're using all these accessory uh, thoracic muscles that ends up leading to the development of barrel chest. Also clubbing of the fingers as we have chronic hypoperfusion of these distal phalanges of the fingers. This is going to lead to the actual structural change in the shape of the fingers looking like finger clubbing. Some adventitious lung sounds that we're going to hear. Well, patients are going to have a cough, but we're going to hear wheezing. Could also see abnormalities on chest x-rays, CTs of the chest, as well as something that we're going to be certainly mindful of are arterial blood gases. Remember, in patients who have COPD, they are chronically retaining CO2. Their CO2 is chronically high. This is actually a cellular look through the lens of how well a patient is oxygenating as well as how well they're getting rid of CO2. If you need more help breaking down complex topics like this one, make sure to head over to nursing.com slash NFN. Click the link in the description below or scan the QR code to unlock your free NCLEX review that covers 77 must know nursing topics. Make sure that you learn this, that we love you guys. Now go out, be your best self today, and as always, happy nursing.